It's great to be here at uh, SlaterCon San Francisco 2019. I'm here with Chip Huen, who is the Senior Deep Learning Engineer at NVIDIA. Uh, Chip focuses on productizing AI research um, at NVIDIA. So Chip, um, you've confirmed what many of us know to be true, that applying machine translation in the real world is more complex than the research and academia setting. Can you tell us a bit about why this is? So it's actually really funny because my team is an application team. Mm -hmm. So we try to help companies bring a research to production. So we talk with so many companies that are struggling to figure mm -hmm. out like how to apply all the cool research into a product. So um, it's really um, so there's so many things that I realized there's a big gap between mm -hmm. research production. So one thing is that um, in research we have to do, have like small data set usually contain like millions of pairs of sentences. And we talk to clients and ask them, so how, many days, how, how much data do you have? And they're like, oh, we have so much, it's like 10,000. It's like, okay, that's not enough. Um, or another thing is, um, in, the, in research, if you have a sentence that's too long, like 5,000 characters or something, we just like chop it off. Like, okay, that's too long for our model, just chop it off. But you cannot, you cannot really do it in, um, in production. Like, you yeah. have to like, account for all the length. Um, another thing is that in research, uh, we care about like benchmarking. Like you have good blue score or something, mm. it's okay. Yeah. But in production, like getting a good blue score is not enough. You need to like how much positive things that need that is needed to be done to bring it to like users. Mm. So there are a lot of differences. Okay, um, and in terms of ongoing and developing research, can you tell us a bit about the area of quality estimation? This is an area I'm really excited about which is unfortunately not very popular in, uh, in research mm -hmm. as, as, I, as far as I know. So there was a shared task a few years ago, but it never really caught on. Um, so I guess it mostly comes from the fact that like, in research, you don't really care about like, how is this going to be used in production. So you know, quality estimation is how it should predict how good a translation is with our reference text. Mm. And in research, you usually have a data set that with, like, with a, rep, like a source sentence and then the ground true sentence. So mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So I hope, so I've seen that most of the progresses I've seen in quality estimation actually comes from the industry. Mm -hmm. And I do hope that, uh, I actually did some research on it um, and it got some interest. And um, I think I'm gonna talk about it at uh, the, my talk today. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it seems like most machine translation models right now are quite language dependent. And I know that Google recently published um, a research report into massively multilingual models. I think it was in 2016. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I know there's ongoing research sort of in this area. What are your thoughts on uh, the massively multilingual models? Um, and do you think this could be the next major breakthrough? Um, so I don't think it's the next breakthrough. It's actually happening right now. Most of the research I see in machine translation has been with a multilingual. Um, so it can address several problems with current state of the art machine translation systems. The first one is how to deal with low resource language pairs. Mm. So we have a lot of data for something from English to French or from German to English. Yeah. But for languages like Hume or Azerbaijan, there's not really a lot of data. Mm. So using a multilingual system, you can leverage like high resource language pairs to help with low resource language pairs. Mm. And I think they have been able to push the state of the art on several low resource language pairs using multilingual uh, machine learning systems. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thanks.